Namaskaram everyone and welcome back in today's video. And today we will gonna embark on a profound journey guided by the wisdom of Sadhguru. Have you ever pondered the purpose of our existence on this planet? In this enlightening discourse, Sadhguru unravels the mysteries of the universe with clarity and depth. From the intricate design of the cosmos to the evolution of life, he sheds light on the profound interconnectedness that shapes our existence. Join us as we delve into ancient wisdom and modern science to uncover the secret of our purpose on this planet. Get ready to expand your understanding and ignite your curiosity as we explore the timeless questions. What is our purpose in this vast universe. Let's dive in. I think even the planet is wondering why the hell these human beings came here <laughs> See, uh, the solar system, the way it is, and so as the other universal systems, the galaxies, they're all happening because they arrive at a certain perfection of geometry. Geometry in the sense, Right now, this planet is going around the sun. It's found its perfect orbit, so it's going and going and going. Not powered by engine or something. See, the airplane is going, powered by engines. It's being pushed. This is not being pushed. This has just found a certain perfe perfection of geometry and it's going on. The day it loses its perfection of geometry, if it loses the line of orbit, it's gone. So in this process, Life happens on this planet, also involving this geometry on various levels. We say in the yogic culture, we say a human being is physiologically and in terms of brain has reached its peak physiologically. That is, after a million years you will not have a horn coming out of your head or something else like the tail disappeared, something else will disappear, this cannot happen. We are saying this from a certain context. Today, the modern neuroscientists are saying similar things. They are saying the size of the neuron in the human brain can neither increase nor in can the wiring inside can increase because the physical laws don't permit it. The laws of physics do not permit it. I will not go into the detail of that. To put it very simply, how we see it is, your birth here, right now all life on this planet is solar powered, isn't it? Yes? It is the sun's energy which is doing all this. Human… B uh, and also this, uh, the revolutions and the rotations of the moon also has influence upon us. The very ocean is rising and falling with the movement of the moon. Only because our mother's bodies were in tune with the cycle of the moon, we are born and we are here. Yes? If this twenty-eight day cycle of the moon does not repeat itself in a woman's body, you and me wouldn't be born. So because it has reached that, we say physically, the physical laws have take… come to a certain place where life upon this planet cannot evolve further. You can make use of what you have in a much better way. Using the same technology, we had a dumb phone, then we had a smartphone, now we have an iPhone, like this we can go on improving it, how we use it. But the fundamental physical laws will not permit any further evolution of this creature. So did it happen by accident? No. The theory of evolution, you know Charles Darwin, who made a monkey out of you? <laughs> not me, him. If you look at the theory of evolution, which was propounded just hundred and fifty years ago, we have said this thousands of years ago in the sense. You know the ten avatars, at least the nine you know, those who have come. What is the first one? Ah, matsya avatara. Matsya avatara means fish or water life. All life on this planet started under water. What is the next avatara? Kurma avatara, amphibious like a turtle, half in the water, half on the land. The next one is varaha avatara a pig or a wild boar. Among the mammals, one animal which is strongly, strongly rooted in its body is a wild boar. See, we… we live next to the forest, we see this. The tribal boys can kill a deer with a stick. 
if you hit it with a stick, it will fall dead. The local dogs will hunt the deer, but a wild boar you try to kill him and see, it's not easy to kill him. You go smash him with a car, his spine is broken, still he will go, he will not stop. Because he is so physically rooted, his life is so physical. So the next form of life was Varahavatara. This simply means the creator is finding expression in first as fish, then as a turtle, then as a wild boar, next one is Narasimha, half, half man, half animal, next one is Vamana, a dwarfed man, next one is a full-grown man but volat emotionally volatile man who is Parishurama, next one is a peaceful man which is Rama, next is a loving man which is a Krishna, next is a meditative man which is a Buddha, the next is supposed to be a mystical being yet to come, okay? This is running very much in parallel lines with the Darwin's theory of evolution, yes or no? It's in the same sequence, exactly in the same sequence. Darwin propounded his theory only hundred and fifty years ago. This was said twelve to fifteen thousand years ago. Adiyogi himself spoke about it. So, if you observe life, you can clearly see from what is inanimate, basic life formed. From that, life evolved. We've always seen it that way. Always we saw life evolved. Constantly, we are… Uh, in every temple you go, there is a snake, there are various symbolisms all around the place, because even today in your brain, one part of your brain is a reptilian brain, you know? The core part of your brain is still a reptilian brain and it still functions and we have different practices in yoga as to how to transcend this reptilian brain and allow the cerebral cortex to function. And today we have scientific evidence to show you. The University of California has done scientific studies on Shambhavi Mahamudra, the basic practice we teach usually. And they say if you practice Shambhavi Mahamudra for three months, the neuronal regeneration increases by two-hundred-and-forty-one percent, a kind of percentage that's never been recorded in the history of any kind of research, okay? Just a simple practice for twenty-one minutes, two-hundred-and-forty-one percentage increase in your brain function and neuronal regeneration. This means as you grow old, you will become more intelligent. Usually young people think you're getting stupid. Yes, your brain is actually growing. You understand? It's getting better by the day. Now there is scientific evidence. We al always knew this, but today a meter has to say it. If a man says it, it's not true. If a man says it, it's doubtful. But a meter has to say it, now the meters are saying it. The meters are saying your brain is actually growing by doing a simple twenty-one mini minute practice. And you don't believe the meter, you just do the practice for three months and see you will see how clear and how smart your mind is suddenly. As we come to the end of our journey into the depths of existence, let us take a moment to reflect on the profound wisdom shared by Sadhguru. Through his insight, we have gained a deeper understanding of the intricate fabric of the existence. From the meticulous design of the cosmos to the mysteries of evolution, Sadhguru has illuminated our path with clarity and insight. In contemplating our purpose on this planet, we are reminded that nothing in the universe occurs by chance. Every aspect of creation from the smallest atom to the grandeur of galaxies is intricately woven into the fabric of existence. As we marvel at the perfection of creation's geometry, we are reminded of the eternal nature of the cosmos. Furthermore, Sadhguru's exploration of evolution both from scientific and ancient perspective invite us to consider the profound interconnectedness of all life. Through his teachings, we are encouraged to embrace the timeless wisdom of the ages and integrate into our modern understanding. As we conclude our journey together, let us carry forth the insight gained from Sadhguru's teachings into our daily life.
May we continue to explore the depth of the existence with curiosity and reverence, knowing that the pursuit of wisdom is a lifelong journey. Remember, this is not a summary of Sadhguru's word. It is simply my interpretation of the deep wisdom he imparted. Kindly keep these two separated to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you for joining in today's video and we will see you tomorrow. Until then, please take care. Namaskar.